Hi, it's Kiffin Low Bates here, and I'm currently walking through Margravine Cemetery in West London near Barons Court. And one of the things that this makes me think of when I'm walking along here is how nothing that human beings do is really permanent. And that, of course, begs the question if you're into Bitcoin and blockchain like I am, how long are these blockchains going to last? And really, we need to look at the leading blockchains, of course, for that. Bitcoin and possibly Ethereum. Now, Bitcoin's been running for 15 years or so, and there are examples of pieces of software that hang around for decades. So there's no technical reason why we won't see Bitcoin nodes up and running in 5, 10, 15, 50 years even maybe. Of course, they won't be exactly the same code base as we currently have, but the protocol is fairly unchanging. And there's a good reason for that. Uh, Bitcoin has managed to attract so much value that we don't really want to run a risk of tinkering with the protocol too quickly or too much. Bitcoin is kind of compelled to be the most conservative, with a small c, of the blockchains out there, then possibly followed by Ethereum, whereas newer blockchains are, of course, free to radically change quickly over time. However, Eventually, as they amass enough locked up value and as they have enough people using them, they have to settle down into a less unstable setup to maintain the confidence in the system. And when it comes to Bitcoin, well, 15 years proves itself to be pretty robust. Um, there's no real reason why it shouldn't last another 15 years. We do, however, hit a problem as time goes on and the block har reward halvings start to bite more and more in that the rewards for miners to secure the network become less and less and they become more and more reliant on transaction um, fees. And of course the problem there is, will the transaction fees rise to provide the incentive that the block rewards currently do? Now I think that at the moment the block reward is 3.125 Bitcoin. The value of Bitcoin is about $100,000 per coin. So you're looking at about a third of a million dollars for finding a block. Um, transactions account for about uh, 0.125 to 0.3 uh, Bitcoin. So they're at a tenth of the value of the block reward. And that means that as we see more and more harmings, eventually transaction fees will cover more of the incentive than the block rewards do and keeping the network just at the current level of strength and security would require the price per bitcoin to rise accordingly so quick uh, back of an envelope calculation and that's a mental envelope because i don't have pen and paper on me here um, we look at a halving and another halving and another halving so about 12 years from now then we're looking at the block reward being at about the level or maybe actually more like 16 years, we're looking at the block reward being about equal to transactions. So we would need the price of a Bitcoin to double and double and double, um, which is starting to take us into the realm of about a million dollars per Bitcoin. Um, there are people out there who think this is perfectly feasible. And indeed, if you look at the world's population and the total number of Bitcoin that can exist, then that does seem to mathematically support the possibility of that functioning. However, given that the entire system is based on the psychological belief of enough individuals that the system will continue to store the value reliably and keep functioning, who knows? It's not an exact science. Human beings aren't entirely rational, and if they're feeling um, skeptical about it at some point in the future, that's the thing that ultimately will bring it crashing down. Anyway, I've been going on for far too long here, so I'll wrap it up for now, and I'll see you in the next video soon. Bye for now.